Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin. Am I echoing again? I don't hear an echo. Okay. Um, so most of you know me in the cake community. I am the Chef Mitchie's Munchies on Instagram. I own Mitchie's Munchies here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I have been caking and baking since I was a little kid. Um, one of my favorite things to tell people is that I was very creative with Play-Doh as a youngster. And I would get super mad at my mom when she would take the hamburgers and fried eggs that I carefully crafted with Play-Doh and she would shove them back into the tin cans. So, <laughs> um, but since then, I've uh, continued learning and growing, and now I love to pass on those little nuggets of wisdom to you guys, um, especially when it comes to icing images, because they're like the leading innovators for so many new products, um, or like, you know, they're not redesigning the wheel, you know what I'm saying? Like they're just adding to that wheel and it just cake decorating, sugar art, all of it is just so amazing. So I am going to show you some fun stuff today. We do have um, a lot to cover, so I hope you don't mind hanging out with me. I will be talking about the new cello sheets that we have in clear and in white. So we're going to be talking about those today. We're also going to be using our Simi Isomalt, um, which you can find at Simi Cakes, or you can find it right on Icing Images. And we're also going to be using some paper potion and our Simi Color Splash. And um, so, Debbie, I'm going to turn my camera down. So if you'd like to keep everyone from getting seasick and read some more comments, that would be amazing. <laughs> All right, that looks pretty good. Good job. <laughs> You're a little crooked, but I think you can see yourself, right? I can, yeah, I can see it. There we go. Just bringing it down a little bit. So I'll get my gloves on and, and we'll get set. So um, we're going to be handling some some liquid hot magma, otherwise known as ice malt. <laughs> so um, wear your gloves. Unfortunately, one of my cotton gloves has gone awry. So I'm going to double glove this hand. <laughs> um, what I've done is I've already melted down some of my ice malt in a um, in some silicone cups over here that I'm keeping warm in my toaster oven. A little trick that I've learned along the way. So um, it stays at an optimal temperature and it stays nice and clear. So. Yes, Debbie, Debbie Samal, this will be on replay. Oh, Sydney, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm usually really good about staying organized with all my isomalt stuff. I'm sure it's somewhere. It's Maybe it's in my apron. Nope. <laughs> it's so, not underneath here. your mat on the upper right side, is it? N no, the glove is, is, it's not here. I it's, don't know it's with it your is. It's with your sock. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's with the missing fox. <laughs> Wherever that may be. So the first thing that you want to do when you are handling hot isomalt or liquid hot magma is make sure that you have a heat proof space. Um, so usually when I'm working with isomalt, I actually put my cutting board down as well as a silk hat. And then I have um, some gray plastic. And Sydney, you might be able to pop this into comments. You actually used to sell these cell flaps. And these are, for me, they're great because they're food grade. I use these to make my ice malt windows super crystal clear. This way I don't have to worry about putting them on, you know, the silk hat and then picking up the, the surface of the silk hat. You know what I mean? Like it's not, isomalt will pick up anything it may anything that it makes an impression with so you want to be really careful with that so this is what i do this is a cake lifter and the reason why i put this on top is so that i can move it out of my workspace without disturbing my isomalt so i'm just going to place this down this is another little board you know for me to move around in case i have two things that i want to put on here and i've got my little simi mat on there and then I'm going to place my crystal clean mat on top. 
And um, I'm going to go over a few things that might seem a little rushed or backwards or whatever, but I am going to be releasing a PDF tutorial for this, and um, but I'm not going to sell it. I and you know, in true fashion of Nicholas, I am all about giving back to my community, so I will have something special, like a special request, basically, when I when I put the PDF out there. But we'll talk about that afterwards. Um, so. What I've done is I've made some cookies and in the PDF tutorial, I show you how to make these cookies and I even provide templates for them. So we are going to create window cookies two different ways. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab a printed image and I have this one right here that has been printed onto the Stello sheet and I'm going to lay that down. This actually might be a little bit too big. We can probably reduce it some. What is a cello sheet? Um, well, it's not a cello sheet. That's right. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> um, I keep calling it cello pane. <laughs> so it's just that. It's um, it's like an edible. It's an edible plastic, basically. And the one you're using that has a white backing, correct? Yes. And the reason why I'm using that is because I want it to um, show up. I, I want I want the uh, image to be really bold and seen. And when right. I put the ice malt on it, it's actually going to magnify it even more. So it's going to be fun. Um, but I did make some others that I'll show you right here in a moment with smaller prints. And we'll take it from there. All right. So let me grab some of my ice malt. All right. Any questions, anybody? We're here if you have any questions. So here I've got my isomol. It's uh, nice and hot. <laughs> Very hot. <laughs> Ooh, hot I'm going to grab another glove. <laughs> and yes, Belinda. You can, oh, Belinda wanted to know if we can print on these. Yes, of course you can, just like icing sheets. Um, the one she's using is white. There's also a clear one as well that you can totally see through it. I'm going to pick up my cookie. I see, I see a little blemish that I don't want on my cookie, so I'm just going to attempt to trim it off. Um, and then uh, that's an eye design there? No, this one is not an eye design. This one I provided to you folks, uh, but oh my gosh. That's right. Eye design has so many Halloween ideas on there. So, you know, um, of course, every day is Halloween here at, at Mitchie's Munchies. <laughs> so I'm always making making eyeballs or something around here. So Marilyn, she was keeping the isomalt in the um, toaster oven. I've used a warming tray, like we have a warming tray below our oven. Um, that's you can do that as well. And mate, yes, of course, you can use this with chocolate. Um, you can put it on buttercream. Um, it likes hot things and it doesn't matter if it's hot. Um, so we're getting questions. Yay. All right. Let me go ahead and show you guys how to pour it. Ideally, you want to make sure that there are no bubbles in there. If you wanted to tint it with the semi splash, go for it. Um, just keep in mind that a little goes a very long way. So we're just going to start from the center. Let me just pop a few bubbles here. So you're going to pour in the center as slow as you can and just allow it to spread out itself. And try not to move your work like I just did. And then what I do is I just take a uh, sugar scribe or take one of my semi tools and pull the ice malt into the corners just to make sure that it's, it's holding on to that cookie. And then if you see any air bubbles pop up or oh good they went away there's one <laughs> Any bubbles i'm comments? reading these comments mitchy these comments are hilarious um julia wants to know if we're doing gooey things today um, yes and and of course she typed it wrong so she's laughing at herself and then she she says mitchy's favorite booger ha 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 oh you remember that huh <laughs> <laughs> the booger day that's the booger thing um 
And Belinda said, uh, so the, the cookies look like potion bottles. That's exactly right. And so she says you can print bats and bones and eyeballs, uh, anything um, on it, just kind of see into it. Um, <laughs> Becky said scabs, ha <laughs> ha. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, Pira, Pira said, I bought the seller sheets in SoFlo, but did not have time to see how you use it. Can you share some more applications like the high shoe, the shoe um, that that um, I think it was um, Tammy made in so at, at SoFlo. Um, so right now, let's go ahead and go through this and um, you can talk about that as you see fit, because I know you know how to do the shoe too. So I have some other images that I printed out as well. Um, one of the great things that I love about the cello sheets is that, oh my gosh, it's like high def. It, the, the print is just amazing. The, the quality of it, it's just like a photograph. It's amazing, love it, love it so much. So um, depending on your environment, I somehow can take anywhere from five minutes to an hour to set up. So this is a, a small piece, so it shouldn't take more than a few moments to uh, set up, but I am going to pull it aside, and with the magic of television, uh, da -da -da, look, we have one already ready. This one Ooh. doesn't have a wrapper on it, but I just wanted to show you how clear that ice malt is. So yeah. I mean, there's a few bubbles in this one, but for the most part, it's super duper clear. You can totally see through it. So and that's uh, what's great about the semi isomalt. There's not a clear isomalt out there. So this is what I'm going to show you guys today. We're gonna to make this cute little potion bottle here. And I'm also going to show you later on how to put things inside, similar to a cookie that Sydney taught us last year. This is actually, I call this a timeout tool for myself. Um, <laughs> it's a shaker cookie that we created, I believe, during the pandemic on one of your online workshops. Um, I preserved mine. It's uh, It's been preserved in resin, so that way I don't have to worry about it spoiling. <laughs> but we can fill it up with loose sprinkles, or I'm going to show you how to fill it up with liquid. Yes, so that your bottle can actually be have a suspended liquid inside. Um, I have a quick announcement uh, for those who were asking about this, the uh, cello sheet and the isomalt and the shoe. Um, Sid of Simi Cakes, who we all know and love, is doing a free play date featuring the shoe and cello sheet. I'm going to write this information down for you. It's going to be on August 20th at Simi Cakes Facebook at 2 p.m. So there, there you go. There's your free play date. Um, and you can learn a lot more about these wonderful sheets. Love it. Is that with the shoe? Ball? I believe so. Yep. It features the shoe. That's awesome. Too. I don't know if you guys want to watch me type, but I'll, I'll show you a little bit. So <laughs> I had another cookie prepared, but I left something on top of it. How weird is that? <laughs> like, but those who know me know me very well. I am like a bull in a china shop. So <laughs> um, one thing that I wanted to tell you is after your isomalt sets up, you want to protect it with some glaze spray and you want to protect both sides. Make sure that you get it fully saturated with that glaze because that is going to keep it crystal clear. It's gonna keep your fingerprints off of it. And it also reflects dust once it's completely dry. So make sure that you get some of that spray. And then um, to keep going with our cookie here, I will just go ahead and pipe. So I'm not a cookie or artist, just so you guys know. Uh, I'm a cake artist, but I love to learn new things and I hope that you guys do, do as well. So this cookie has a nice little bevel right here. So I want to keep that open because that is where I'm going to attach it to the other cookie. And that's where I can, you know, make sure that the other cookie, slide one over here. Hang on a second. Is this one? Yeah, this is the one that goes with it. So for this cookie, this is going to be really funny when I show you. Um, I want to make sure that 
this other cookie has a nice little bevel in it as well. So that way there's enough room to put the liquid ooze or the shaky materials, whatever. Somebody mentioned scabs earlier. Funny story. Guess what I found out by accident? Cello sheets are highly flammable. How cool is that? <laughs> and now we have scabs in a jar. <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't that fun? Look yes, that. I've burned it's cello so sheets gross. before. Huh? I've burnt cello sheets before. Donna, um, Donna is asking what it's like to eat isomalt. It's it's like um, a hard candy or a lollipop. Um, it's the same. Isomalt is actually in those Werther's um, uh, hard candies. Um, it's sugar. It's sugar free, isn't it? Yes, I think it that's is. what it is. Yeah. It's made from beets. Yes. Um, so if you eat a lot of them, you'll have the same reaction as if you eat a lot of beets, but they're not red. No, uh, actually, you'll have some south of the border issues if you eat too many. <laughs> right. That's what happens if you eat a lot of beets. Really? Yes. I've never had that. Um, yeah. Funny story. Um, beet salad was one of Chef Nick's favorite foods. And I found that out. Um, when we went out to dinner one night and he ordered the beet salad and when the beet salad arrived, there were no beets in it. So it was like a big joke and we were all laughing about it. And, and he was so polite to the server, like even saying, you know, there are no beets in the salad. How is this a beet salad? <laughs> <laughs> so for like a year, every time I went somewhere, that had beet salad or a beet dish, I was sending him pictures and I'm like, thinking of you. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> That's great. So That's if great. anybody, um, if you've never flooded a cookie before, I do have a, a few videos or you can find any cookier will show you how to properly flood a cookie. So I'm just showing you for grins and giggles here to show you how bad I am at it. So we do have a question for you from my friend Becky, who is going to be live with us soon. Um, she wanted to know how you get the bevel in the isomalt. So when, when I was pouring the isomalt, I did not fill the entire window. I made sure that the isomalt spread out to all of the corners. And um, I would say that it, it filled that window about a quarter quarter of the way up the cookie. So that's how you get that bevel. And then, um, you know, depending on how your cookies bake up the front of your cookie, it may, it may flatten or, um, you know, you may uh, put a pan on top as soon as your cookies are, are finished or whatever. But what I did in this case was I puffed up the um, royal icing so that it made a nice little bevel on top of my cookie just so that it looked like we're, you know, getting some depth perception into the cookie. Gotcha. So, and then I'm using my magical wand scribe here to make sure they get everybody blended in there nice. So, and then uh, royal icing, if anybody's worked with royal before, you know that it could take quite a bit of time to dry. Um, usually what I do is I'll put it in front of a fan or a, or put it inside the dehydrator, you know, depending on how fast I need things to move. So, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy on, on the side. So, and then I'm going to bring our other cookie back in so that I can check it. So guys, as you're watching this, what other ways can you see using the same technique for different holidays or occasions? I wanna get some feedback there because this is definitely for Halloween and your potions your lotions and potions. Um, I, I kind of see a fish tank. I also, yes, I have the, um, I've made a fish tank and that's on my Instagram. I've made an aquarium and I would show it to you, but we destroyed it, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've also made a snow globe. Ah, and that's what Catherine Donner just said. I would make snow globes. Julia says Valentine's, Donna says Christmas tree cookies, uh, baby rattles, Eunice says. Yeah. Uh, Julia says the Valentine's with the confetti hearts. Love it, love it. Mother's Day perfume bottles, great, Mona. Ooh, that would be cute. Um, you know, Sydney has uh, a new mold. She has that nail polish mold. Uh, 
Ooh. Yeah. That's and pretty was, awesome. I, you know, you can make it solid, but it's a two part mold. So you can actually make it hollow. And I was like, hmm, you know, we could probably fit a, um, a cello sheet, like anchor it right in the middle, Sydney. And, you know, just do like, the, I don't know. I, I got tons of ideas swirling around because of that. <laughs> so awesome. Thank you for always being innovative with your molds. Yeah, she's pretty darn awesome. That's for sure. Um, Denise Knight says stained glass. Carol Ann says how uh, spooky cookies. Eunice pinata cookies. Brooke is stuck on Halloween. She wants to make body parts and bottles. Of course, Brooke. <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. So um, I just want to make our, our cookie that we first poured, and it's just about set. I, I'm just going to give it a couple of more moments to do its thing. So. Um, in the meantime, I will move on with other things. So, um, Mate wants to know um, if you can fold, I'm assuming the cello sheets uh, like rice paper to make fans. And um, we actually had a demo with a fan on, on it. Um, and they used the rice paper actually to do it because it, it gives the printed piece to it as well. Um, now, um, in Humid areas, the cello sheets are awesome and peel off really, really easy. But I know that uh, our friend Mitchie is in Vegas, where we'll be next month, um, and it's very dry. So um, she would have to get hers a little damp in order to fold it. But for mine, I'm actually have one in my hand, and I literally just fold it, it right now, like that's what you're hearing, and crease, put a crease in it. Um, that's what I, I'm actually peeling it off the back. I'm going to rip it. But I won't let me rip it. But I literally just folded it and creased it and took my fingernails and pressed that crease into it hard. So it's a hard fold on it. Um, so. Love that. Um, yep. So Heidi said it'll be cute with a photo printed on inside of a cookie frame. <laughs> yes, it would. And Mitchie just posted her snow globe. Awesome. Yeah, I posted the and the um, and above that is the aquarium. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Um, All right, so the so. next thing that I'm gonna show you guys is how to paint your cookie. So I'm going to bring over a blank cookie here um, and I'm going to show you how to paint a black surface cookie as well. So we're going to, these are the two that we're going to paint. And this one, we're going to keep this one aside because this is the one that I'm going to show you later on in Icing Images Stories. I'm going to show you how to fill it up and make it oozy and delicious. <laughs> Love oozy. But Belinda does have a question. How do you attach the back of the, uh, attach it, how do you attach to the back of the cookie? The cello sheet. I'm, I'm assuming, assuming that's what she means, yes. So let's check this one and see if it's ready yet. Um, Usually what I do is I just, you hear it? It's ready. So the cello sheet will attach to the isomalt and then you can trim off the excess. So you can, um, you can actually like peel it off, but I actually prefer to use my precision cutting knife, which I've, oh, there it is. <laughs> like this, my precision cutting knife, which has run away. Now, you took the backing of the cello sheet off before you I did that. Did. I did. I'm sorry that I didn't mention that. Yes, I took okay. the. Um, let me show you guys how to do that. Oops, I'm dropping stuff. And there are many ways to do it. Everybody's going to find their favorite. This way is probably one of the easiest ways, what she's showing you. So, what I'll do first is cut off the image that I want. Usually what I can do is, um, and I found this out by accident as well. That's why they call me the accidental demoist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, usually I can lay the image side down onto my sill pack and it will do the work for me. Oh yeah. So let's see if, it, if it's gonna be generous to us today. So just See now, like that. that's really easy. Um, 
when and just what I do when it's dry because you're very dry yeah there you go exactly what you're doing so when it's dry you see how she's pulling that backing and she's keeping it kind of folded back so it's peeling more away from it um that's the best way to do it when it's really dry when it's humid it kind of falls off almost so there you go Woohoo! so this is what i what i did um so i, I got had that prepared and sorry i didn't show you that in the beginning it's okay um, i love this image isn't that cool we need to get it that is. added on eye designs yes you do i'm going to put that in my little reminders because i'm a little airheaded lately more so than usual i should say <laughs> all right so, and um i i've eaten these before it um does anybody remember listerine strips <laughs> yeah i had them in covid <laughs> that's kind of, kind of what it reminds me of but um you know, like as far as texture goes. So this one is ready to decorate. And I, I think what it, it took, what, maybe seven minutes to set up, not even. Yeah. So that one's going to be, that one's going to be super cute. All right. So let's mix up some edible paint. Um, to do that, Sydney has the, uh, her Stimmy Color Splash. These are airbrush colors. And she also has, um, what is it dilution solution to to accompany it um for the for the white because the white's a little bit thicker but what i do is i use a little bit of my paper potion and, Love it. and i just add um a touch of cine splash oh I, i'm punking myself i keep forgetting that i put the um the little backing back into the bottle because I travel a lot, so I bring my stuff with me. <laughs> Let me just grab a little bit of color there. I'm making a mess already. So there we go. I keep that backing in there to keep it from spilling out. And then where did my brushes go? Okay, brushes. Did you know we sell brushes now and those little trays? Yes, I saw that. Yes. Like, oh my goodness. So the um, the paper potion makes a really nice little uh, diluter as well, and I prefer the paper potion. I use it when I teach my children's classes because children have a tendency to stick everything in their mouths. Doesn't matter what age they are, <laughs> even if you have a glove on, they, they you know they try to put it in their mouth. So um, you know I didn't want to get my kids drunk off of any of the other diluters that are out there, you know, like Everclear and, and vodka, you know, that's the last thing I need is some, is one of my students going back and saying, hey mom, look at what we made. And they're <laughs> slurring. <laughs> and like, Mindy is a bad teacher. <laughs> well, adults put things in their mouth too. So, you know. <laughs> I'm like, this is not, not a shot class. Uh, so then what I'll do is I'll add some of the base white over to the side and I'm also going to give that a little spritz to thin it out. And I'm going to show you how to make a reflection on your on your cookies here. So yes, the blue is still on there because I want to start out with a lighter blue. And don't forget, all of this will be in the PDF tutorial that I'm going to provide for you. Another thing that I like about the paper potion is that it's not going to break down my royal icing. So I don't have to worry about, um, you know, it becoming oversaturated. Rule of thumb, when you are using edible paint or any color, you want to start lightest and then move to dark. So what I'm doing right here is I'm starting with that light blue to kind of give it a shine I'm hoping that you can see it you know like like glass how glass reflects right because i mean you know it's it's a cookie with a glass panel <laughs> so we want to have some reflection in there and you can see and then we want to get some up here just a little bit of reflection and then just kind of like blend it in So I know this is probably going a little too quick and you're probably like, can you make, make your work closer? Maybe. <laughs> Put a little yeah, bit of here. Okay, good. Or at least I can. 
I was thinking maybe lower in the lower in the boom just a bit. There we go. Lower the boom. <laughs> it's upside down. How annoying. Yeah. Well, it's hard for people to work the other way. I think we're all used to watching things upside down. <laughs> I, I am. So I'm also going to bring in a little bit of my sugar art here. This one is called Gunmetal. And I'm going to add a little bit to the side just because glass has all different types of reflect reflective colors in it. I wanted to put a little bit of the blue in there. So I'm just going to bring it over here. Nice. Look at that. Nice little dark, darky blue there. Nice. A muted, a muted blue. And my blue. I'm actually going to switch the brush on this one. I cannot get my, I'm typing stuff in, but I can't get it to list, like post up there. I'm like having issues again. <laughs> so it's a little bit too dark. So I'm going to loosen that up a little bit here with some paper blushing. And then we blend, blend, blend. Is that any uh, Edward Scissorhands friends in here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, every time I, I blend color, I always think about that part where the mom is giving Edward a, a makeover. And then she's like, and then we blend, blend, blend. <laughs> <laughs> a little more color. Oh, Mitchie, I love you. Oh, thank you. I love you too. Again, we need to loosen that up. So yeah, if you are, if you've ever painted cookies with water or with, with Everclear and Vaki, um, the paper potion just works so much nicer because like I said, it doesn't degrade your royal icing. It won't, you know, break it down and it dries rather quickly. Um, but for some reason, you still have like a little bit of work time if you need to change it, you know, make cool. a change. Um, now, did you know that all these cello sheets, whether mm -hmm. they're white or the clear, once you print on them, you can actually put them right on hot or cold drinks. And they last, they're really cool the way they last and stuff. So um, just a suggestion to liven up things, especially if you have a storefront and serve coffee or any type of, it could be coffee or, or, or cold drinks and you can plop your logo on and they will never forget your your place because nobody sees that. Love so, that. Uh, yeah. Or they'll get mad because you put something in the drink. <laughs> and they'll think you can't eat this, but you really can. I mean like, did you <laughs> you <see me? laughs> I put paper in there, man. Becky, yes, it's paper potion smells so good. Oh yeah. <laughs> And it's, yes, blend yeah, you, don't have to worry so about, you don't have to worry about uh, paper potion muddling the flavor of anything because it, it complements whatever you're putting it on. Yes, it has a slight vanilla flavor and it smells like vanilla. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little darker color and then feathering it out with the paper potion. And Belinda, no, it does not melt in the hot drink. I mean, eventually it melts because um, otherwise it would be gross to drink, but no, it lasts a good long time. Um, you start seeing it fall apart as you move the drink around, but it takes a little bit of time to do that. It's pretty darn cool. So you guys get in the gist of how, how I paint it? Beautiful. <laughs> so again, I like I said, I, I have a PDF coming out showing you step-by-step step how to do this. And um, if you missed it earlier, I said that this will be a PDF available to everybody. Um, I just have one request and I'll, I'll let you guys know what that is after, after our live. That sounds wonderful. I think that's, I know what you're going to do. And it of course makes sense with my friend, Mitchie. Um, and let's see, uh, ba, 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 how many? So Julia, if you put a little more moisture in whatever you're adhering your image to, it's going to be, it will kind of merge that image in more so they won't think it's regular paper or maybe they'll still think it. Um, so you can try that. 
and it does not melt. The, the sheets don't melt in, um, in uh, the liquid. Um, I believe um, also Jesse and Riley, she's on next Tuesday. Um, she actually put a cello sheet on buttercream and fondant. And yes, it's Carol, it's nice and shiny. It's really pretty. Um, it kind of magnifies it, I guess. Um, so these cello sheets can be used. I actually am playing right now. You can't see it with an old piece of cello that I made a spider web out. Um, and I sit here and play with fidget. It's a fidget toy for me now. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a fidget toy. Um, because I can't sit still. And for whatever reason, I can't hit enter on my computer to get my messages in. So I have to do something. So that's what I'm playing with. That's what this is. Yeah, I call it a title. Yeah, we have a toy. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to show you how to do that same technique, but on the black royal icing. So we're going to bring back our semicolor splash, our base white. Love it. Love the semi. We sell that on our site, guys. I got a little bit of blue on there. I'm like, I don't want to squirt too much. Okay, double. Then I'm going to pick up some of my. I'm not going to use that one because it's too blue. There you go. More of our paper potion. Nice clean brush. And again, you want to make sure that you dab off your excess so that you don't start out with too much. If you do start out with too much, then you can just go back with some paper potion and lighten that up. So just going to lightly brush this on just to kind of get the, the base going. And then I did, I, we were talking, but for your bottom reflection, most bottles, you know, they have that, that black bubble that you can kind of see in there. So you just mm -hmm. want to kind of make like a little swoop like that. Gotcha. Yeah, Brooke Taylor made the, um, made the cello lace not too long ago. So these are all on our lives, guys, that you can just kind of type in um, the person's name and the icing images live name into Google um, and it kind of pops up for you. <clears throat> so I'm going to pick up some of this blue right here and start blending okay. that in. I like all the different shape bottles too. There's nothing that's the same. Yes. Yes. And you'll have um, in the PDF tutorial, it will have four different templates inside. Nice. And I heard through a little bunny that um, that um, a funny bunny that you you might be getting those for free or something, which I'm sure you're going to talk about. Well, you mentioned you were, so I know you're going to. Yeah. Ooh, free. We like free. Yeah. So the, the PDF tutorial will be free to all of my my pals, my sugar pals out there, but. Um, it, I will have a request or a suggestion for it. So, yes. But, yeah. So yeah, um, as it dries, you want to continue layering up the white so that it, you know, gets all of that contrast in there. But it looks nice. And then eventually what I will do is I will use just some straight semi base white to go yeah. around the edge here. Melinda recently did a demo on her her, her club's uh, page. And if you want to provide that link, Melinda, that'd be great using the cello sheets with chocolate and on top of the royal icing cookie and isomalt. So she's done both. So uh, she'll put that uh, link up too for you because that's the cap. Is it the Capitals Confection? I think page. No, they're uh, no, in San Antonio. Uh, that's what it is. I can't. There's so many Texas clubs. <laughs> my <laughs> enter button is now working. How do you know my enter button is working? Let me try. Hi. 
Enter. No, it's not. <laughs> my mouth is working. I, my computer's a little messed up. I think I leave way too much open. <laughs> That's me. I'm like, I need to close everything before I start stuff. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. So now you see what I did? I put the solid white off to the side, and then I'm just bringing in my plain paper potion to feather it all, all in, and you know, nice. It all and that's what's cool about that semi splash. You're painting on black, mm -hmm. and you can see it. Oh, Carol, I know why you think my enter button is now working. That's Lori, not me. <laughs> A fellow wizard behind the curtains. So yeah. That's that with that. And then um, let me go back over to our other cookie that we flooded. So there's a couple of different ways that you can give it a stopper. Um, these, I used modeling chocolate for those. And then on some other ones, I I piped it on. So that's what I would I would do for this one, but it's not, it's just not ready yet. I wanna make sure that this is a little more set up so that way the, there's a line so that you can see that there's a difference. I don't want, plus I don't want, um, I don't want the stopper to be the same height as the bottle because I want it to look like a stopper. You know right. what I mean? You're picking up what I'm putting down. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> we are, we are. All right. All right, so now if you wanted to fill your bottle with some strange stuff. Um, this, My is what <laughs> this is what you're going to do. You're going to use melting chocolate to create a barrier. And what you want to do with that is you want to make sure that you get down inside that bevel right mm -hmm. near the ice malt. What I used was paintbrush to do it. Um, I was I'm like, I'm not going to show you guys how to do it on camera. It's it's pretty easy. You just melt some chocolate and go to town with a paintbrush. <laughs> so you want to make sure that the entire surface is covered with chocolate. Oops, my jersey Inclu is going. Including the window? Part of the window. You want to get um, right the right where the ice malt is meeting the cookie. You want to get a little bit of chocolate right there. But don't forget, make sure that you use your glaze spray first and okay. make sure that that's completely dry. So what we're doing is we're, we're creating a protective barrier. And if some gets, if too much gets on there, you can just, you know, wipe it off with your thumb. Oops, almost broke the cookie. Um, you're making this barrier because if you want to add things that are not dry, that's, that's when you'll use the chocolate barrier. So if you are just using sprinkles, you can just go ahead and um, put those right in there. Um, let me see, that one's still wet. I had a cookie, but I pulled it aside. We're not gonna use that one, but um, I'll show you with, with this one, the messed up cookie. So let's pretend that this one doesn't have any chocolate. <laughs> There's no chocolate on it. <laughs> and I'll grab this one. Painty Danny Sprints here. Hi, Patricia, Daniela. We we will be running the replay on this, guys. These Sprints make no sense, but there we go. Um, so what you would do is attach your other cookie to this. Make sure you know that it lines up or whatever. Um, and then you have your shaker cookie. So you can attach them with chocolate or with uh, royal icing but that's just to give you an idea how to make the shaker cookie. So you won't need the chocolate if it's dry, like if you're not adding anything crazy inside, like I'm going to show you how to do. Um, so get ready for it, because it's gonna be fun. Here we go, guys. <laughs> Hold on tight. Where did I put the other ones? Oh, there they are. I got these cute little stars from um, my friend Ro. She does uh, roses, uh, cake glitters, or something like that. What are they called? Rosy Sweet Art. You see them? Look at them. Oh, um, yeah. Like Mylar stars or whatever. They're really cool. So I'm going to take some piping gel, and it's going to make inappropriate noises for me. They're appropriate <laughs> for you, sweetie. Yes. It's not actually the bottle making that noise. It's me. Of course it is. <laughs> Making a mess. 
cool. So you'll take some clear piping gel, make sure that it is super crystal clear, and you are going to add just a touch of water to it to thin it out. So I've got my little spray bottle here. Um, oh, thank goodness. I'm like, what? There's blue on the outside of the container. I'm like, did that get inside? <laughs> so I'm just going to add a little bit of the water. So um, Vanessa, Chef Greeley, she had, um, I posted my aquarium cookie after I did a class with the Bake Fest. And she was like, how did you do that? <laughs> So and I'm like, I have a PDF tutorial coming out. I'll show you. So this is what I did. I just diluted some clear piping gel. And then, and then, and then, and then I added some sparkle to it. You can add sparkle or um, I wouldn't add colored sprinkles only because the color transfers into the piping gel. So then we so you're doing the liquid is piping gel. That's what you use. And that would make sense as to why it's not um, liquefying or dissolving that cello sheet. Right. Now the cello sheet is already attached to the back side of the cookie with the isomalt. And yeah. then it's been protected with the, the glaze spray that we used earlier or that right. I showed you that I used. And then um, to create the barrier, it's chocolate. And then you can... Um, we're gonna burn our chocolate here a little bit just to heat it up. Burn, you baby, with, burn. You can do this with chocolate or with royal icing, whatever floats your boat. And then you're going to attach those together and allow them to set up. And before you proceed, you want to seal off the sides in chocolate as well. So um, once this is set up, I'll, I'll go ahead and melt some more chocolate, but you'll be able to see this, all your liquid is moving around. It's really neat. That is so it's cool. Actually, it's better from the other side. See it moving around? Yeah. But you can see it like in front of you because you're not like through camera lenses and computer screens. See the stars moving? Yes. Isn't that fun? <laughs> So now you know how to make shaker cookies a couple of different ways. Like if you just want to want them to have an image behind them, you can just do it um, the way that I showed you in, in the front of our little live here. And um, it's amazing to further step with this uh, creativity. I would use wafer paper with some paper potion to make little tags on there. You know, like I have newt. Um, <laughs> Frog fingers, <laughs> pale of frogs, you know, anything that you want to do, make little apothecary labels. And, and then, um, like I said, I will have all of this inside a PDF tutorial for everyone. So what'd you, what'd you think? I think it's awesome, 